Hello everyone, so, new year, new model update. The Quen Image text to image generation AI models just dropped their new versions, 2512. And this version of Quen Image actually does a pretty impressive job with detail work rendered by the AI model. I'm going to check out this model using some text prompts I generated with Quen 3 Max. I'm using Quen 3 Max because they're both from the same company, so they really understand Quen Image a lot. And this model generates text prompts that are specifically tailored to what Quen Image 2512 enhances, like human realism. With this update, they've significantly reduced that AI generated look and substantially improved overall image realism. That probably means they've cut down on those plastic looking skins that a lot of people obsess over when chasing realism. Plus, they've added finer, more natural details in images, things you'll definitely notice in landscapes, animal fur, and other natural elements, which now show way more detail. They've also improved text rendering in this version of Quen Image, making textual elements more accurate and higher quality, with a better understanding of how image and text layout should work together based on your prompt. Some of the styles I'm showing here, you can see I'm just using text prompts to generate the image. The model performed over 10,000 rounds of evaluation in the AI arena, and it shows up pretty strong. This model actually holds its own pretty nicely as an open source option compared to others. As you can see on the leaderboard, the top spot is Google's Gemini 3 Pro, then Image Gen 4 from Google, and third is Seed Dream 4.5 from ByteDance, which by the way, is a closed commercial model. Only Quen Image 2512 in fourth place is open source. And honestly, the overall score isn't that far behind the top two. Seed Dream and Image Gen 4 are just a few points behind, whereas Gemini 3 Pro is quite a bit ahead. But again, if you look at the win rate throughout the AI performance evaluations, it's actually really close compared to Image Gen 4. Image Gen 4 has a 24% win rate, while Quen Image hits 40% in this version. So we're going to take a closer look at these overall scores and see how it actually performed. Running this locally, obviously we've got Comfy UI for that. We've played around with Comfy UI a lot, and the official Comfy UI Hugging Face repo just got updated with Quen Image repositories. If you click into the split files, you'll see the Diffusion model folder. You'll notice there are BF16, FP8 versions of this model, all uploaded just 10 hours ago, as of my recording time. I actually have my own merged models from the official Quen Image repo. Because when we're using image models for training LoRa's, we usually need to download the full model open weights and then use all those files in something like an AI toolkit to train your LoRa. What I did was merge the transformer files into one. That's the diffusion model you typically drop into your Comfy UI models folder. I merged everything, from shading to shade, into a single file using the same method Comfy UI uses for VF16 models. Before they uploaded the files to the Comfy UI repo, I actually downloaded the open vase myself and prepped it for LoRa training once it became available. So I've also merged the BF16 files here because I already had them. I didn't want to re-download from another source. As for the text encoder and VAE, they're still using the same files as the previous version. So if you're an existing user, you don't need to re-download those. But if you're new, just head into the text encoder folder and download one of those model files. This is the Quen 2.5 VL Vision language model. It acts as the text encoder. The larger file size is obviously the BF16 precision version, while the FP8 version is smaller. The VAE is just one single 200 megabyte file. Once you load that in, you're good to go. So those three files, based on their folder names, should all go into your Comfy UI models folder. Where exactly do they go? In your Comfy UI models folder, you'll put the VAE file inside the VAE folder, just like this. I've got other VAEs here too, and my Quen Image VAE is located right here. For the text encoder, it goes, obviously, into the text encoder folder. It's pretty straightforward. Just follow the clean instructions and folder naming conventions they've laid out and drop everything into the right place in your local setup. For the diffusion model, I've put mine in a subfolder called Quent Image because I've got a lot going on and it's just better organized for me. I've got my merged BF16 file here plus older models like Quen Image FP8 and the recently launched Quen Image Edit 2511, so I just keep all of them in a subfolder, easier to manage. All right, so once you've downloaded all the files, you might be wondering, what if I've got low VRAM and still want to play with this? 
I don't want to load 40 gigabytes or even 20 into my VRAM. Some people prefer to offload into RAM and run things slower, but there's another alternative, GGUF models. These run faster on low VRAM machines. Q2 to Q8, quantizations will likely give you smaller file sizes than the standard safe tensor files. Once you download those, just drop them into the unit subfolder inside your ComfyUI models directory. It'll look something like this. As you can see, I've got other GGUF quantized models for different AI systems, but I don't need them for Quen Image right now. Also, the Light X2V framework has released a Quen Image 2512 Lightning model, it's a LoRa. So you'll need to download either the BF16 or FP32 precision version and put it into your LoRa subfolder. That's exactly what I did. I've got my LoRa subfolder organized, and you can see, I downloaded the Quen Image 2512 Lightning 4-step FP32 file right here. This is the one I'm using, highlighted for clarity. There's another option too, called Wooly. It uses a turbo model mechanism that lets LoRa's run on low sampling steps, minimum 4, but that doesn't mean you always have to run 4 steps. You can go higher if you want. The 4-step mark is just the minimum, same concept as Light x 2 v Some people asked in previous videos, why do you run higher steps if the LoRa is labeled 4-step? Well, that's the answer. It's the minimum, not a hard limit. So here, you've got the Wooly Turbo LoRa 4-step BF16 built specifically for Comfy UI. It's super clear that these publishers compiled this version just for Comfy UI, so don't mix it up. If you're using Comfy UI and want this Turbo LoRa, download the Comfy UI safe tensor file, otherwise grab the top one, which is for Python inference or other programming environments. That covers the basic files you need to run Quen Image 2.5.1.2 locally in ComfyUI. I've also built a super basic workflow for text-to-image generation. And since people have asked before, how do you do image-to-image -image generation? Here's your answer. Instead of starting from a blank latent image, you connect your latent data from the K-sampler using a VAE encode node. Hook the VAE's red dot output into the VAE encode input. Then, your pixel input, like from a load image node, gets converted into latent data, which you pass up to the K sampler. For image to image, you'll need to adjust the denoise value. It shouldn't be 1.0. If you want more changes, set it to something like 0.8, that's 80% change. If you only want minor tweaks, like in a second or third pass for detail enhancement, you might use 0.2 or 0.35. That's common for refinement passes. But let's get back to the basics, text to image. Using Quen 3 Max, I generated three main testing categories for this model. First is the realism test, mentioned on the Quen image model page. The goal here is to evaluate photorealism, lighting accuracy, material fidelity, and environmental coherence. A lot of people think realism is just about a woman's body or a character's physique, but it's also about how the environment and materials look. Think bigger. Think outside the box, especially for generative AI. Second is prompt adherence across graphic styles. This tests how well the AI follows complex prompts involving mixed media, artistic direction, and style blending. Sometimes you'll see something that looks realistic but isn't, or appears cartoonish but slips in 2D or photoreal elements. That's part of the test. Third is text on image display. We're evaluating legibility, font placement accuracy, and how well text integrates into the image. They claim text rendering has improved a lot in this version, so I included it. And since Quen3 is a multilingual model, I used it to generate these instructions. I'm not gonna give my opinion on whether the results are good or not. Instead, I'll show you over 30 text prompts and let you see how they perform in the actual environment. The workflow itself is pretty simple. You just need to manage three things. Select the correct diffusion model file. Load the right text encoder. In this case, Quen 2.5 VL, that's the low clip node. Load the VAE model that matches Quen image, exactly the files we talked about earlier. You'll also select a LoRa model. I've bypassed this little node here. It's set to the Quen image lightning four-step model. If you unbypass it, the workflow will use that LoRa and switch to four-step sampling. That means in the case sampler, you'd change the steps from 50 down to 4, the minimum requirement. Of course, you can go higher, say 12 steps, for more detail. But for now, 
I'm turning it off and going back to 50 steps so we can test the base model's true output before speeding things up with LoRa's. For this workflow, I'll run two prompts per testing category. Then, I'll take the rest of the prompts from each section and plug them into side-by-side -side comparisons between Quen Image 2512 and the older version. As you can see, I've already generated some preview images before recording, so here we go. This is the first preview test, right here. Now, back to the workflow, super basic text-to-image setup you can try yourself. Prompt 1. A 24-year-old South Asian woman in a tailored eyewear lining posing confidently in a sunset Santorini environment. I'm not gonna read the full prompt aloud, that's not the point of this video, we're here to see how it looks. Everything loaded successfully, so all files are good, and by the way, the new Quen Image 2512 doesn't require you to update ComfyUI to a newer version, it works just fine with your existing setup. Here's the first generated image in this workflow. It looks pretty nice. The character's realism is solid, her hair's blowing in the wind which fits the Santorini vibe. The background feels authentic too. White houses, blue rooftops, Mediterranean coastline. But, like many realism-focused models, the background is still pretty blurry. The character's skin has definitely improved. It's not that flux plastic skin anymore. Big upgrade in Quen image. Remember, this is a 720p image. No upscalers, enhancers, or detailers. Just pure 50-step generation in Comfy UI. For a portrait or close-up, the human realism holds up. But the background? Still too blurry. You kinda have to guess. Wait, where is this place? It needs better balance. Some blur for depth, sure, but not this much. That's something they still need to refine. All right. Let's try the second prompt. This one's cool. I've tested it with other AI friends too. It's inspired by that famous Sora video. A woman in a red dress walking down a rainy Tokyo street. But in this version, she's not wearing sunglasses at night. Instead, she's got a transparent PVC rain jacket, more realistic for a rainy day. In a silk, rainy Tokyo street? And yeah, again, the background's blurry. The model seems overly focused on the main character, which is common in realism styles. But the raindrops? Way better than previous versions. Before, they looked like big weird water blobs on the ground. Now they're subtle little dots, and the wet silky feel of the concrete? Much improved. Now let's switch gears to graphic styles. I tried a cyberpunk comic book style, and it looks pretty cool. Totally different from realism, no obsession with photoreal women here. Instead, we've got neon lights, a character taking a selfie, and even a speech bubble that says, vibe check. The prompt adherence is solid, all the elements are there. I ran similar tests before with the same prompt and got consistent results, just different seeds. Change the text in the bubble to Quen image or swap the emoji and it adapts. That's the power of seed variation. Next up, a 3D Pixar style render. This one blends realism with stylized characters. Generated result? Pretty fun. The character has that 3D Pixar style look, while the background Machu Picchu in Peru using realistic. It's a mix and it works. You even see a TikTok logo on her phone showing she's live streaming as a travel vlogger. Again, I'll share all these prompts so you can play with them yourself. Last style test, 2D Japanese anime comic style. The composition is fully cartoon, no realism creeping in. The prompt nails that specific Japanese artwork aesthetic set against a modern street with traditional housing. Now, I know this basic workflow might feel a little boring. I've loaded both Quen image models. You can try both if you've got them. I've also loaded Laura's for both, Light X 2V Lightning 4-step for the new model and the equivalent for the old. For this comparison, I'm not using any low-step Laura's. Both case samplers use identical settings. Euler sampler, Simple scheduler, same seed. But look, the compositions and character directions are totally different. That means they trained the new 2512 model on a different dataset. Some folks commented on past videos, why don't you use that compare node from MTB, slider tool, to compare QN image and flux in the previous video? Good question, but that tool only makes sense when comparing the same image. Sliding left and right between two completely different generations? It's meaningless. You can't compare facial details or textures when the poses and scenes don't match. So I prefer side-by-side -side comparisons, much clearer. First test, realism style. 
The old Quen image gives you a 3D looking face and hyper real textures, semi realistic, but not quite there. That was the best we had a few months ago. Now, way more realism. Even small details like the wood grain on that fire stove are richer. The new model just delivers better character fidelity, right out of the box, with no extra LoRa's or enhancers. Of course, if you do add detailers or multi pass refinement, like many YouTubers do, it'll look even better. But that's not what we're testing here. Second comparison Anime meets photorealism. Japanese schoolgirl in a sailor uniform, standing in the rain, styled in Makoto Shinkai's signature aesthetic. If you don't know Makoto Shinkai, just Google it or check Pinterest. You'll instantly recognize that dreamy, luminous anime style. Interestingly, the old Quen image actually nailed that specific anime look better. The new version leans more toward 3D Final Fantasy style characters, but big win for the new model, the wet concrete and reflections are far more realistic. The old version, just flat surfaces with water on top. Third test, watercolor plus sketch aesthetic. Both images show a character on a rooftop drinking coffee, but the new model blends watercolor texture and sketch lines more authentically. The old one feels more like colored pencil, less fluid, less painterly. So the new model isn't always better, but for mixed styles, it often handles complexity more gracefully. Now, here's a really interesting one. Realism plus fantasy. A Studio Ghibli-inspired fantasy scene a curly-haired girl flying on a vintage suitcase over a sunset with realistic fabric physics on her wind-blown dress. Key point. No matter the art style, 3D, cartoon, anime, the dress must look physically realistic, and the new model delivers. The old version gives you a cartoonish character and sky. The new one? Realistic fabric texture and motion. You can believe that dress is real. That's advanced prompt adherence understanding material physics within a fantastical scene. Final test, mid-age realism. A middle-aged woman laughing while adjusting oversized glasses, driving a vintage convertible along California's Pacific Coast Highway, wind in her wavy hair, ocean cliffs below, realistic motion blur, 1960s car details. Both images fulfill the prompt, but, crucially, the new model actually renders her as middle-aged. The old version, still gives you that smooth, wrinkle-free, eternally 30-year-old face, especially on Western features. But Quen Image 2512, more authentic aging, better hair movement from the wind, and overall stronger realism. Yeah, I agree. This model has made serious strides in human photorealism. I'll share all these prompts so you can test them yourself, even compare Quen Image against Flux. If you've complained about plastic skin before, see how it stacks up now. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.